Trishana McGowan, a sports journalist. And welcome again to my YouTube channel. I know you guys enjoyed my last interview and looking forward to this one as well. I'm going to be speaking with Adin Skeen. He's a youth Olympic right. champion over 100 meters and also a gold medal in the medley. Adin, good evening. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm finally happy to have you uh, joining me uh, for, for an exclusive interview. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, so let us let us um, you know start. You're now a father, a husband, and you're still competing. Uh, tell me about that the recent you know Odin skiing because many Jamaicans they can find you on social media, but not <laughs> knowing not knowing you know all that you're up to. Oh well, everything started uh 2017. Uh, I kind of spot my wife on Instagram. <laughs> You know, slid yeah. in the DMs. <laughs> slid in the DMs. Cause at first, uh, my friend Yanni Cart, he was really in the process. I was like, I can't wait no longer. So I slid in the DMs. Uh, the one thing I told him, like, I like her hairstyle. You know, the tiny bumps them were always weird back. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So weird that I was like, yeah, man. I like that, you know. You're kind of like, sad. Yeah. I take it take a good while for her to answer, but. You know, come on, trap meets, uh, let's say regionals. Uh, the relation start to grow, communication get better and better until I went pro after NCs. And she had just graduated Florida. Uh, so I went back home, then I found an agent and the agent was like, we're going to ship you back to Florida. I was like, all right, bet. I was like, Jesus, you don't know when I fly it up. <laughs> you don't know fly it up. So I called her up, I was like, yo, trying to move in with me in Florida? And she was like, uh, wow. I'm not sure. I was like, hey, take a chance. I'm coming to Florida. So since 2017, it was history. And otherwise from that, I've been bouncing around from Florida, Texas. Uh, I have a pan pandemic baby, 2020. Uh, that was stressing. The coronavirus take a big hit on my career and I would say it helped me to grow to be more patient as I'm sometimes short-tempered. Uh, I have a, a one-year-old one baby, Aubrey Janae. Through the, that, that pandemic, it was stressful because I didn't know if my wife going to cut or catch the COVID or, you know, she going to have problems with the delivery. But I don't know some that, but they are. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're living. Yeah, yeah. You're living. Yeah. Um, so let us jump to the career. Uh, so you you're about to be father of two. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, and and, and so that's your cue to the men. Slide, slide in the DM <laughs> if, they <see. laughs> if they see if you really like are you like trying to wipe her or you know date her, slide in the DMs. That's your advice. Well, uh, but like the, the funniest thing, you know, mm -hmm. I went to Juco 2012 mm -hmm. and I uh, saw her at Arkansas. But oh. you know, I was like, she's not gonna talk to no Juco you uh, You know the way she's not gonna talk yeah, to Yeah, 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 yeah. So Maybe want a D1. Yeah, so yeah. that's a great <laughs> time. We have a time when I see it, 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 it happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so now let's jump to the career because. You won Youth Olympics in 2010. Um, you know, you, you have had your fair share of success. But since then, not much of what, you know, yourself and many Jamaicans maybe would have expected at this point of your career, um, not yeah. yet unfolding. How has that been for you? Stressful. Because, you know, sometimes uh, the sponsors might think hey, you're just wasting time and he was like, no, it's just like you just don't have the that team around you, know, you know, yeah. to build back your confidence and get you back healthy. Cause like since 2017, I was on the, the verge to take over after you same boat and um probably Blake. Yeah. And I uh I struggled through injuries through the NCAA uh mm -hmm. ankle injury. Wrap that fixed up, come home. I was like, yeah, man, child, I eat this now, man. Went through the rounds pretty, pretty easily until like the finals. Oh, 
hamstring just grabbed me up my dry face. I was like, Jesus Christ. That was the worst, the worst moment mm-hmm. for me. Ever since that, I don't really have a team around me, not really much family members around me. So, you know, my mentality cannot break down from that because I know yeah. right there was a, was a, just to the money bag. The money bag mm-hmm. take over track and field. And otherwise, from that and switching coaches, it's just, you have to find the right coach that knows your body. If you don't find the right coach, boy, you left out in the gutter. So right now, it's just try to keep strong, find the right coach, mm-hmm. try and find the right team. Because if you do have that, boy, my mama tell you. But with, with that said, though, wow. Um, you Like you said, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough goal. It's a tough goal. Yeah. Um, where are you based now? Who are, who are, who are you training with uh, this season? Uh, I'm based in Waco, Texas. That's uh, Waco, Texas. Yeah, I'm training at uh, University of Baylor. Uh, I got recruited by my training partner and his friend, Trayvon Bromel at the time. He was training at Baylor and he was like, yo, but I really want to come down to Baylor because Baylor they far up, but you know, he needs some training partners. So I was like, wow, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, man, you're around nine seconds, yeah, man. <laughs> Tell my training partner, yeah, man. Come make a move, talk to the agents yeah. and talk to the coach, Michael Ford. Everything, mm-hmm. you know, sounds good. So I was like, all right, man, we just down the road, an hour drive. Yeah. Go down drive. I went some that, but we got there. Uh, Trayvon had to, had to leave and went down to the, the Tumbleweed track club in Jacksonville. So otherwise, it's just me and my training partner and um, two other persons were out there training with Michael Ford at Baylor. Yeah, the the you you said something very um, important just now. You made mention about the team around you, which is important when things did not materialize how you'd have wanted it. Twenty seventeen. Uh, also, you know, it's like a money back. The agent. How how has that been? But um, no, you know, but you you are you are like I said, a father a husband, you have responsibilities, but you're still competing with hopes of making it, um, you know, on the big scene like many have hoped for since 2010 and even before, but 2010, following that Youth Olympic gold medal. How is that, how is it for you now, re a team? Have you been able to assemble a team? Are you hoping to assemble a team? You know, tell me some more about that. So I have my agents on, well, let me say, agents is just agents, right? Mm-hmm. I have to have a, a team. Well, I have the team like my wife, my mom, my daughter, and uh, my best friend, Walker Lantern. Funny fact, 2016, I had lost my scholarship uh, at Auburn because yeah. I had started school late. So I went back home and trained with our uh, racers with Glenn Mills, Patrick Dawson, yeah. and my best friend at the time, Walker Lantern. I didn't know he was a coach. Or he can coach at moments. Me coach, and him, yeah. yeah, me and him was getting getting there in practice. And he always pushed me like, yo, come in on my you push my push your body, push your body. <laughs> Funny fact, went by the got my scholarship and went back to Auburn 2017, January 14. And I realized like the training was so completely different. Sometimes I was like, Jesus Christ, I made the wrong decision. It's just so like you know, yes, yeah. so it's like. People always abush me in high school. I was like, you know what? Something, something good will come out next. So I'm just easing myself and go back to college. February, I was like, no, somebody can't take this man. Mm-hmm. I'm, I have a call and say, yo, get some program from Patrick Nadal. Please, man, you please, man. Say, yo, welcome. Say, yo, things don't look too bright in general. They don't look too bright. Yeah. It's all right. So I'm so, um, booking my flight. And then after that, the rest become history. But that's the small team I have around me. I don't really have nobody close right now. He's in uh, Virginia, so it's just basically small for me. We got here. Uh, yeah. Mommy call me every, well, every day. Daddy call me every now and then. Otherwise, from my family support, that's the only team I have. But the team really I want is like a physiotherapist, a doctor where we can depend on, you know? Yeah. Somebody can hold it together because... Like I said, if your if your mentality is not there, ninety percent, well, it just your whole body decides. You just, uh, you know, what? it just 
give it up and done. Because at one point I was like, Jesus, yeah. it's not look like it's not going to work out, man. Uh, I think it was April of this year, I had uh, pulled my hamstring. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife was there, my daughter, and I turned to her at the fence. I was like, I quit. I quit. Like, I finished, like, this don't make no sense. Like, every year is the same, but I'm thinking, yeah, and it just, it just need for change. So she looked at me and was like, listen, God always have a reason why I'm putting in this predicament. And your mother always I tell you, it's just not your time. It's like, when am I time? Jesus, peace, man. Yeah, it can be, it can be, you know? yeah. You're questioning, it, it, you're questioning it, it really, things. It, it really is stressful. So that team, when we say the team, is important for putting in place that you're if you break down, you have somebody to build up, somebody to be my wife, my daughter, my mother, sister, brother, and my best friend, Waka, because every day I'm calling and I'm say, youth. Yeah. But it been too worse than this, my brother. Worse, you know? Yeah, man. Have you, have you, worse than come back, man. Have you, um, so the success that you, you have been hunting, uh, you know, since 2010, uh, or a journey that started before 2010, uh, like you said, the ups and downs, the struggles of it. Have you, you, you spoke about the mental aspect as well. Have you given, given up on, on that dream, you know, the season, the Olympic just ended. Uh, where are you now mentally? Have you given up on that dream? Are you still as driven? Uh, at a point, like I said, in April up to, let me say, Jamaica Charles, Cena Charles. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was like, yeah, man, quit. Like, okay. it's just not going anywhere. Then I, I called my pops. I'm like, daddy. What do you think? It's like, mm-hmm. boy, sometimes, we well, enough for you, enough for you, you know. And then when we see we win Jamaica, I was like, no, someone. Oh, why everybody around nine and we just talk to someone? Can't that, man. Yeah. So I was like, back to the drawing board. If the coach don't work out, it just don't work out. If this don't work out, this don't work out. It just don't work out, don't work out. But we have to find a solution. So like, I sit down on the phone with my best friend every single day. I was like, yo. Waiting is like, yeah, it's not your time. It's not my youth. Like me, I said that. Blake, come back. Men in the pan in face. So I pick That's up. A, a, you see, um, Johan yeah. Blake um, is a motivation. His, yeah, his journey has like, been your motivation as well. That, uh, one of my motivations, them. Um, and I have uh, Justin Gatlin, one of my mentors. like, Call him every now and then. He was like, remember when I was out, I got burned. You know, I, I tried every sports and he wanted to give up, give up hope, give up life. But then, you know, have a family and he stick it out. So that's my mentality right now. Even at that point, I volunteer uh, where I'm at to coach kids from 10 and under, straight up to 16, 17, 18. And while I was there for like two, two, two and a half months, I realized, yo, we can't step in front of sports. We still have mm-hmm. more to give and my body still have more. So I was like, yeah, man. Yeah. After August, after August 1st, start running like five miles every day, abs, stretch, try to get my hamstring better, try to get the body going, even do yoga, <laughs> try to come yeah. back. Yeah, man. So it's like a stage you just have to say, is that it in or out? But mm-hmm. the people in Romeo is like, no, my, we, you know, we in it, of course. Yeah. Everybody they're sticking with you. Yeah, they're sticking with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you, you have a personal best of 9.98 seconds. Uh, so you, you're, you're in the sub-10 club. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you, you think, you know, if you are to maybe get the, the physiotherapist help and, you know, all the other variables connected, Odin's skin can get the job done, is what you're saying? You might have to get the job done. After, after, <laughs> after. Like, if you just have that in place, remember I tell you for the next four to six years, come yeah, on, we are going to rock the world, man. Rock the world straight, man. You, you, I, I like that. You, you, so you're, you're still, you know, dreaming, having hope, despite your 
your ups and downs. struggles and ups and downs. So let us back up a little bit because I, I like to call it, you know, your journey clearly, you know, is nothing special without the challenges. So your final year of Wilma's Boys, I don't think you have spoken out ever about that. I don't think you, you have, you know, said much on it. So I'm hoping that you do know. So your final oh. year, your final year at Wilma's Boys, uh, and that again, followed the Youth Olympic gold medals. Not the way you would have wanted to go out. Uh, you know, you were not able to compete. They said, uh, you know, the whole thing about going to six form. Uh, how did that make you feel personally? Uh, to be honest, I locked away for six months. Uh, yeah. Didn't go outside, didn't practice. Actually, uh, shut down completely. Coaches called me, was like, yo, you need to come practice. Like, no, because everywhere I go, people look at me like, yeah, man, you the man, him not no grades, and it's like, Jesus, kind of mm. shameful, like, yeah, kind of shameful, like, ooh, ooh. but let me tell him, yeah, I don't, let me tell him, like, one thing straight, you see, sometimes you choose to do the work, but sometimes you don't choose to do the work. At that point, track and field was on top, you know, yeah. travel, traveling 24-7, and then, for like, study a book, for me, kind of hard. So it's either you put one to the side or you uh, want to get dropped. So coming in, uh, Fort Farm. Fort Farm, I get the most improved student in the world, Wilma's boys. My average was at, uh, before my average was at like around 45, 50. Mm-hmm. And then Fort Farm I decided to take the work serious and train serious. Mm-hmm. Boom, my average went to a, from 45 up to a 80, 88, 87 average. And like the people them shout out, like, tell some can't them work is just at that point I choose not to do it because to track up. Yeah. You know, and sometimes at that at that, at that age, I couldn't balance the track and the work properly. Yeah. So one I forgot. So I was like, you know, track and feet can't bring my fire still, still have trouble, make a look of earnings. Take track and feel. Couldn't go um six for my Wilmers alone, just up in a white shirt and you know Wilmers mm-hmm. style. But still have to do the look of um fifth form classwork and I mean to be honest, stuff work out for the good and the better because Wilmers never really acknowledged me as one of them superstar like or them acknowledge like Julian and Jail and the rest. But you know that not really. Mm-hmm. And I really paid that in mind. I mean, no but said, this, despite you winning the youth Olympic gold medals, you 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 felt as if yeah, we still we still get leave off, we still get leave off. So it's like, I you know I said, miss set the trend, miss set the trend of Wilmers before them they really call Wilmers a uh, track academy. Twenty ten when we dominate champs, mm-hmm. boom. And after use my points from class two, it's only it's only the only class two youth out there back to back sprint double. If my points never, if, if I never win, I will must be to win um, 2010 uh, champs. 2010 champs, yeah. Yeah. And many many people maybe champs. not aware of that. Mm-mm. But yeah. it's not none of the two brag and boast still, but still give no, you know much respect. You know them really? Yeah. We must build me up, teach me certain things. But at that point, at that point, school were just. Yeah. Never, never for me at that point. But you were so young, and like you said, you locked away for six months. You felt embarrassed about, you know, the lack of grades um, and so on. What helped you to come out of that element? Because like I said, you know, there are other student athletes who, who suffer or they're in the same boat. Let me put it that way. They're in the same boat. There are lots of student athletes who are in the same boat. Um, you know, the, the grades, the struggles. I've always spoken about, you know, it is tough to find the balance between doing sports. Some do it uh, effortlessly, while others need help uh, to find that balance between doing sports and doing extremely well in school. What, what um, or who helped you to, you know, come out of that hole that you were maybe in, you know, in emotional-wise and otherwise? Uh, basically, my parents still, although it kind of took them a while. Well, it took me a while to say, yo, Virginia, stop your fool system and get up, man. I don't like to look at you, yo. So, like, after the six months, I heard I could uh, apply for, uh, let me say, colleges. So, I carved up 2010, 
uh, have like 24 colleges, mm-hmm. D1s, like your man need to become D1 by the time they have the grades. Yeah. So 2012, I was like, mm. emailed everybody. It's like, yeah, man, I'm interested. Said we man. Said we like, all right, cool. Yeah. Jesus, the grades. And I never knew about no junior college. Someone mm-hmm. was like, yo, you have a school, you have a school called uh, Salt Plains. Oh, like, Salt yeah. Plains. Mm-hmm. You're one of the major Yeah, something about the mm-hmm. Like, yes, man. Mm-hmm. And a coach at Auburn, Auburn put me on a salt plant. I'm like, all right, cool. Put out my transcript, uh, send it to them. I was like, yeah, man, you're good. Uh, so that really gave me a, a boost. It's like, you know, they can still go to school, not dog. They can still run. No man, you come in, not dog. Like, mm-hmm. Then uh, Christopher Arley and Bert and Cameron. And his assistant took me over uh, Stadium East. Damien, uh, he was like, the man can put in the work, man. And go over there, just mm-hmm. mad the place again, Bridget. You can't do it again. So, All right, cool. So that gave me motivation. It's like, they can have a chance to go back to school and run again. All right. Yeah. Uh, so you, you went on to Auburn. So there is light. There's always some light at the end of your tunnel. Um, so you went on to Auburn. Uh, tell yeah. the world, <laughs> right? What you studied, what were, what were your major, what you graduated with, and despite you graduating with that, what it is that you love and want to do? Because this is very intriguing. Ah, uh, to be honest, uh, I never graduated. I'm just take the sure. opportunity. Yeah, yeah I went to this. Go on your chance. Yeah, this close. Mm-hmm. They is close to graduate. I was yeah. like, hmm. The that opportunity to go pro. Yeah, is yeah. that that I go go pro. So went to Auburn. Went to Auburn and I studied uh public administration and law. Well, law class, Jesus Christ. Remember me tell you that I love them. <laughs> just uh when they come from junior college, they just like two classes give you. Mm. Yeah, if they do really have your major, so just suck it up and take it because you know you want you want to be there for the long run. Mm-hmm. So I did that. Uh, I have like let's say 20 more, 20 more credit, credit hours leave to graduate. So it's like four to five classes. So I take the opportunity with the Auburn, lose scholarship, as I say, come back. Mm-hmm. Destroy Auburn track and field wickedly. Uh I don't want to become a lawyer. I don't want to work in no office car, you know. That's mm-hmm. definitely that's not, not my case. thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to become a coach. If it's not a coach, I might just join the Air Force. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> coaching. Um, I think your journey and all that you have been through, that's the reason you want to give back or back into, you know, athletes at what level? Yeah. And help help the younger kids to understand like, hey, at a young age is all fun and games. But when they get to a certain age, business is business. Like at the the club that I volunteered at, uh, Team Waco here in um, Waco, Texas. They they don't call me by my first name. It's like, is that the army coach? <laughs> is that army coach? I was like, I don't I don't want to take crap from nobody, unless mm-hmm. I was like, ah, today's a easy day, guys. Let's have fun. Uh-uh. I was like, hey, aren't you here? Fun and games aside, until I was like, ah, fun and games aside, it's time to work, trying to put in the work. Like many of them out there, like many parents, like they don't understand the the true piece of track and field or the development of the kids of track and field. So after out there giving the parents knowledge and giving the kids knowledge, also yeah. learning from different coaches out there so I can build up my profile and try to become a high school or one of them are D1 college coaches. Yeah. So, you know, you have you still have fans in Jamaica. You know, Jamaicans, they, they do love winners. So following that Youth Olympic uh, Games where you won both the gold medals, uh, persons would have been like, yeah, man, he's the next thing to burst out on the scene. You know how Jamaicans get you, you, yeah. you know. Um, what do you say to them at this point? Uh... Like I tell myself, and my best friend tell me, and my wife tell me, and my mama tell me, like, never give up hope. 
But these skin is still around. And I guarantee 2022. Never they bought one. I swear. Yeah. After don't give up hope. Still look, still look out. You know, uh, I'm gonna start my own YouTube channel, put on um practices, show my family, you know, show, show people like, yeah, man. We're still about I'm still gonna rock the world no matter what, no matter where people say they can't bring me down, bring me down and talk them crap all them one. But you know, we're still there, yeah. still putting the work. But look over me 2022 for real. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time out to, to speak with me. You're, so to my to, to those that will be watching, we would have heard some sounds. Guess what? He's always on daddy duty. How's that been for you? Yeah, because I know you take her to training with you and so on. How's that been? I mean, I had to ask the coaches like, "Hey, coach, uh, can I bring my daughter to practice? Come on, if I had, had work at the time." She's so like, "Yeah, yeah, cool." In the sun, at me, <laughs> baby yeah. Albert, coaches, training partners, Brandon Carnes, uh, Will London, mm -hmm. George, I'm Coach Michael Ford, Coach Stacy. You know, we all out there. So not mm -hmm. much for it takes, baby. Daddy about to go around and stay right here. Yeah. Um, no, like when she just born, she take like an hour or an hour sleep, get mm -hmm. up. No, mommy wants to sleep, <laughs> me wants to sleep. Yeah. It's like a back to back, her shift, my shift, her shift, my shift. Until uh, she told me one day, like, babes, you know, see, I feel patient. See, I'm going to sleep, man. <laughs> I need a break, man. Give me a break, man. I want to sleep. So from that, uh, she kind of changed my whole perspective mm -hmm. about being a husband and a father at the same time. I have to have more patience, uh, more mm -hmm. le levels of knowledge. You know, so, all right, she's a baby. You got to control certain stuff. You can't play the game like you used to. You can't go outside like you used to. You know, this is the whole full responsibility. Yeah. Right, cool. A whole learning process. We learn, we learn as we go, even though we still have to learn. Because, like, when I think so, she away for my time. No, let's work on fear of time, man. So, yeah, yeah, man, you get up, all right. You want some food, that is change. Yeah. So, it's just like a whole learning cycle for now until them grow big. You can't get them a look at top, top. I say, yeah, man, well, you can't. <laughs> I'm going to sleep or something. <laughs> I'm going to sleep yeah. or something, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you you know, so 2022, I was about to say which which year are we in, you know, with the pandemic, you never know. So 2022, uh, all being well, many Jamaicans can expect Odin skiing to, yeah, man. Yeah, to be knocking on the door. More than knock, I won't ever open it, man, I walk through. Walk through. Walk through the door, man, yeah, man. Jamaica needs some more excitement to chuck on the field, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, man. And you think you're the person the flavor. For yeah, man, I forgot to bring the flavor, man. I forgot to bring it, man. I forgot have to come wassy. I know when yeah. Charles on the Friday night, Friday night, I forgot to wassy, man. I forgot to bring, <laughs> I forgot to bring it Friday night, but man. You, but you still, you still have that confidence, though, which, I, which I'm excited about. You still have that confidence. Um, yeah, well, because you you did say, you know, following you um, you you could have been or wanted to be the next best Jamaican sprinter. And you know, it's 2021, you still have that confidence despite everything that you've been through. Like, I read an article and boy said, uh, taking like four to five years to run nine. Mm -hmm. And my best friend, he was like, yo, four to five years, no, no, that means if you give up in the bridge and you take him four to five years, no, you that means you can't do it in the bridge. You do it already, come here, do it again, no. With that and um, every day, my wife was in my ears like, can't quit. I have to eat. Food, I have to eat. I have to put food on the table. Sorry, then mama, I said the word. Now you, she's the captain of the boat. I'm just a sailor. So I have to yeah. just go, go with it. And she said, honey, you think it's time? Like, mm, probably have a discussion about it because she was a former athlete at the University of Florida. So yeah. she, yeah, she's so no stranger to, yeah. Yeah, she's no stranger. She can be on my, my butt <laughs> 24 yeah. 7. Yeah, man. So she's no stranger to check on feet. But you have to have the confidence. If you don't have no confidence, money, yeah, your mentality and self esteem get knocked down real quick, man. Yeah. 
Well, can't make, can't make, can't make, can't make the kids them say, Daddy, he's not feel up. Yeah, man. Can't have that. <laughs> Cannot have that. No, can't have that, man. Yeah. All right. So all the best to you. Um, yeah. You know, I, I wish you well. And thank you for finally speaking with me. Especially, of course, you know, um, many would have wanted to know how you felt within that moment um, following your high school departure. Uh, that did not go very well. But, yeah, you're still, you're still yeah, feeling man. Still a steel man, I can't sink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, big up yourself and have a good one. All uh, right, thanks for the interview. Anytime, anytime.